Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk to you about what might be one of the best books that I've read so far this year, and that book is Love Thy Neighbor, A Story of War by Peter Moss. This book was published in 1996 and it covers the year that Peter Moss spent covering the war in Bosnia. Peter Moss was a journalist working overseas for the Washington Post when war broke out in Bosnia in the spring of 1992 and he was sent to the Balkans having never been there before and having never covered a war before. So this book is very much his experience as a war journalist in a country that he doesn't know much about, and his experience is very much baptism by fire. By the early 1990s, Yugoslavia was basically falling apart, and there was a rise in nationalism among Serbians in an effort to break away from Yugoslavia and form a greater Serbia. Part of the effort involved expelling Bosnian Muslims from Serb-controlled areas. The problem with that was that in a lot of areas, Bosnian Muslims and Serbs lived together in pluralistic communities, and so expelling Bosnian Muslims amounted to a military attack on civilian populations, neighbors attacking neighbors to cleanse areas of Bosnian Muslims. Basically what you should know is that this war was very much a war fought by the Serb military, backed by the Serbian government against Bosnian Muslim civilians who were killed or displaced in the worst genocide, really, that Europe has seen since the Holocaust. Peter Moss was on the ground in Bosnia during the first year of the war, and he witnessed a lot of the atrocities and war crimes firsthand. Needless to say, this was not a light read, it was not a fun read, but it was incredibly illuminating and moving and laid bare some essential truths and questions about humanity. What is so effective about this book though, and why I think it's really accessible to anyone, is that Peter Moss went into this conflict knowing very little about Bosnia, and this book really takes you through his education in this part of the world and in this war as it was unfolding. So you don't need to have read anything about Bosnia or know anything about Bosnia before reading this book. So I want to read you a little exchange that happens at the very beginning of the book. So in this scene he's talking to a Bosnian woman who has fled from her city to split Croatia, which is normally a six-hour drive. I asked how long it took to get from Foča to split. 45 days, she said. Excuse me? 45 days. You have been walking for 45 days? Yes, but only at night. It was too dangerous to walk during the day. I wrote it down in my notebook, but I didn't believe it. How could she have been on the run with two children for 45 days? The year was 1992, not 1942, and Bosnia had smooth roads and fast cars with anti-lock braking systems and double overhead cam engines. What was going on? It made no sense that Europe was falling into madness again at the end of the 20th century. I think that is a perfect example of how he walks you through his own ignorance in the face of atrocities that were happening not in black and white films from the 1940s or in history textbooks about World War II, but things that were happening 25 years ago. He talks about how he initially believed the narrative that, well, this is happening in Yugoslavia because they have these centuries-old tribal rivalries. They're not like the rest of us. But in reality, he makes the point that, you know, French and Germans and British and French and all these different countries have been fighting each other for centuries also. And if you look at a place like America, we were like killing each other 150 years ago during the Civil War. So this really isn't something that could never happen anywhere else. He also tells you the stories of the individual people that he meets while he's in Bosnia, whether they be victims or soldiers or fellow journalists and photographers and translators on the ground. And that makes this book feel very intimate and very vital and full of individual voices and the 
culture and sounds and characters of the Balkans and it feels like recent relevant history. It really hits you right in the gut. He also talks about how regular everyday Serbians could be complicit in these attacks on their Bosnian Muslim neighbors and he interrogates that and does a good job of showing how easy it is to be complicit and he himself witnessing a Muslim man being beat up by a Serbian soldier he admits that he stands by and does nothing because he's afraid that if he intervenes he might be putting himself at risk and at times it's uncomfortable to read and it's uncomfortable to have to reflect on what you would do in a situation like that or what you might already be doing while crises are unfolding around the world and we choose to not think about them and ignore them because they're not happening in our own backyard. The underlying question in this book is how could this have happened in Europe at the end of the 20th century after Europe and America vowed to never let something like the Holocaust happen ever again. He ultimately is extremely critical of the UN and Bill Clinton's policy of appeasement and it's a cautionary tale that I think we would be smart to be mindful of right now because there is a genocide going on in Myanmar right now against the Rohingya people. I would just say that if you're someone who is interested in the Holocaust or thinks that studying the Holocaust is valuable, then I don't see why you wouldn't find this history equally important. The reason I picked up this book is because my landlords, who I am closer to than I think most people are with their landlords, are from Bosnia and were cleansed from their city. And just spending time with them and learning some things about what they experienced made me naturally interested in learning more about this history. That being said, despite my specific interest in this book, I think it's something that is so incredibly moving and I think incredibly relevant. This is a heartbreaking and unforgettable book and I can't recommend it enough. I'm gonna include some links below, including an interview that Peter Moss did with Charlie Rose. And if you're really interested, I'm gonna leave a link to the BBC's excellent documentary, The Death of Yugoslavia, which will do a much better job than I did to explain this whole conflict that happened. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Hopefully it wasn't too heavy. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.